Lilith and Frazier break up on Cheers, NBC Thursday. Coming up next from your 24-hour news source, late word of a small plane crash in Ames. We'll tell you what happened. In other news, tragedy strikes a Des Moines family again. Investigators find the body of a man in the rubble of an explosion. Just six months ago, his two children died in a fire. We'll have details. Jonathan Waller's family facing the future now that Joanne Taggart is facing jail time. I'm Lori Groves. I'll have their story. President Bush and the First Lady returned to the White House, vowing to cooperate with President-elect Clinton. Only one team can advance in the playoffs. We'll have highlights from the Valley Dowling game. Those stories, plus Kathy Soltero begins her special series of reports, 48 Hours Homeless, all coming up next. This Family Works Moment is brought to you by Telecom USA. Another tip from Quinn, family detective. She was a single mom and out of town a lot on business. He was a 12-year-old son going through growing pains and wanting mom home more. So I gave mom a pointer. Go over a calendar with your son, agree on some time to be together, and let him pick out something special to do. It won't solve all your problems, but things may run a little smoother. Oh, John. Oh, Daphne. And you need the latest scoop on your soap fast. Today on Days of Our Days. Turn to InTouch in the front of your Telecom USA directory. How do I make new improved KFC extra tasty crispy so crispy outside and so juicy inside? The secret is a special KFC. Any questions? New improved extra tasty crispy from KFC. Hurry in and try new Extra Tasty Crispy Chicken at KFC. Starting Thursday, you can get 10 pieces of Extra Tasty Crispy Chicken for just $5.99 plus tax. That's right, 10 pieces, just $5.99. Available in Lake Edna or your neck of the woods. Here are tonight's winning Iowa Powerball numbers from WHO TV 13. Live from WHO TV 13, where the news comes first. 24 hours a day. John Bachman, Kim Kerrigan, Jim Zobel with sports, and meteorologist Gary Amble with the weather. This is New Center 13 at 10. A Des Moines man dead after an explosion and fire on University Avenue. Family members say there's a connection to three other fire deaths at that same address earlier this year. Good evening. We'll have more on that explosion in just a moment. First, we want to tell you what's happening in Ames. About a half hour ago, a small plane crashed on takeoff from the Ames airport. There are reports of injuries. And we have a crew headed toward Ames at this time. We hope to have a live report for you coming up in just a few minutes. But first, the tragic story of a Des Moines family who's now lost a fourth loved one to fire. Relatives say the 28-year-old David Gordon is, in fact, the victim of an earlier fire that took the lives of his two children and his mother-in-law. News Center 13's Jim Strickland spoke to family members who now are grieving again. Death has found a home at 4416 University. Got a body. Soon after they found David Gordon's body, his half-brother, Kenny Martin, was called upon to make an ID. I don't know why. One of those, he's gone. Gordon and wife Kathy Dolan had buried their two children in May. Fire had swept through their home while the couple was away on vacation. Three-year-old Zachary Dolan and his four-month-old sister Rachel were killed, along with Kathy Dolan's mother, Norma. Family members say David Gordon had been despondent ever since. Several family members say they're sure the fire and Gordon's death were intentional. They burned himself up. He couldn't take it no more without his kids. At the scene, officials would not speculate about suicide, but they did say there was little in the garage to cause an accident. There's no electricity that I can see to the building. There's uh, no gas lines, no LP. Uh, I'm just not sure what it causes at this point. Fire Marshal Ken Danley says he thinks he knows what happened here now, but he's not ready to discuss it. There have been seven fire deaths in Des Moines in 1992, four of them at this address. The house has long since been demolished, and now with this garage, there's nothing left here to burn. Jim Strickland, News Center 13. 
Officially, the fire remains under investigation, an autopsy scheduled for the morning. Having won the office he's dreamed about all his life, Bill Clinton tonight is thinking about the work that lies ahead. His first act as president-elect was to reassure foreign leaders and financial markets that when he talks about change, he doesn't mean instability. That although change is on the horizon, we understand the need to pursue stability even as we pursue new growth. The changes I seek will strengthen America's market systems, not weaken them. That the greatest gesture of goodwill any nation can make toward me is to continue their full cooperation during this period with our one president, George Bush. And that the greatest mistake any adversary could make would be to doubt America's resolve during this period of transition. Tonight, Clinton met with his transition team and other aides to discuss policy and personal decisions. President and First Lady Barbara Bush say they're ready to do some readjusting. Bush returned to the White House today to a hero's welcome. <laughs> Hundreds of flags waving, flag waving supporters filled the South Lawn to show their thanks to the fate in the face of defeat. Bush kept his remarks Very short, thanking everyone. It's been a wonderful four years, and nobody can take that away from any of us. It's been good and strong, and I think we've really contributed something to the country, and maybe history will record it that way. Thank you all very, very much. Bush promised to help ease Clinton's transi transition, but had little else to say specific about his plans for the next 75 days in office. When Bill Clinton takes office, what kind of changes can we expect, and how will it be felt right here in Iowa? John's standing by to take a look at that for us. John. Cities in Iowa can look for some dramatic changes from the Clinton presidency. Some of the federal money that was cut during the Reagan and Bush administrations will likely be restored. And Clinton has promised to create new jobs in urban areas where jobs are sorely needed. In the field of education, look for a strong commitment from President Clinton, focusing especially on public schools, and expect some new life for Head Start. Clinton has pledged to fully support the preschool program. As for the world of business, the new administration will be pushing required health insurance coverage for workers. And workers can also look for support from President Clinton in efforts to prevent companies from hiring permanent replacements. Just some of the effects that might be felt here in Iowa. Kim? Thanks, John. After all the preparation and excitement, it's hard to believe Election Day has come and gone. Iowa Democrats are still reeling from the exciting night. Democrats here in Des Moines clapped and cheered each time the results showed Bill Clinton in the lead and their work paying off. The morning headlines told the story. Bill Clinton won a landslide victory in Electoral College, but Iowa races of interest did not all follow the polls. One of those issues was the Equal Rights Amendment, which did not pass. Proponents were busy tearing down their offices today. They didn't expect defeat, but they say they'll try again. Taking a look at world and national news, Rockies celebrating the U.S. election results in Baghdad. Crowds filled the streets shouting, Bush out, Saddam forever. President Saddam Hussein fired his pistol into the air several times to celebrate the Bush defeat. Nervousness following Clinton's victory dragging down Wall Street. Most of the selling came in the last hour of trading at the closing bell. The Dow Jones Industrial Average was down 29 and a half points. And in southeast Japan, two trains collided head-on last night, injuring at least 65 people. The accident happened about 20 miles east of Nagasaki. Authorities say two single-car trains wound up facing each other on the same track. The accident is still under investigation. Now that Joanne Taggart has been found guilty of child endangerment, what will happen to her son? Senator 13's Lori Groves visited with Jonathan Waller's guardian today. She has high hopes. Are you having fun? <laughs> Marge Drehaas says her family is looking into adopting Jonathan Waller. The four-year-old boy has gone through more than any child should. He's a fighter. Well, yes, he does the bike now. And because of the bike, he's gaining a lot of leg strength. We, the jury, find the defendant, Joanne Taggart, guilty of the crime of child endangerment. Yesterday, a Council Bluffs jury found Jonathan's mother guilty of child endangerment. Joanne Taggart has a bond hearing Friday to see if she can remain free until her January sentencing. Under the law, she can still visit her son, but that's as far as it goes. I will not permit him to be taken from my home. Drehaus says she hopes that Taggart gets the help she needs behind bars. 
Joanne Taggart now faces the possibility of up to 30 years in prison. Would it be justice? Jonathan's aunt says he may not live 30 years and he'll never have a normal childhood. They tell us time heals all things. We'll see if there's enough time left. Marge Drehaus let me visit with Jonathan off camera today and this is the second time that I've seen him and he is doing much better. He even gave me a little hug and a kiss today. Despite his many health problems, he does seem to be very happy and quite affectionate. And has come a lot further than anyone ever expected, isn't that right? He certainly has. Okay, thanks, Lori. Maybe Hollywood can answer the question, who took Johnny Gosh? On a West Des Moines street this morning, producers from the reality-based TV show America's Most Wanted briefed the young actor playing Johnny Gosh on some last-minute details. A reenactment of what may have taken place 10 years ago was played out by local people today. Johnny's story will be featured on the show later this year. More to come from your 24-hour news source. What's it like to be homeless in Des Moines? Kathy Soltero will show us in part one of her special series, 48 Hours Homeless. We're looking at a possibility of a warmer next week, but we may have to take a few raindrops to get it in here. I'll have more on that just a few minutes ahead. Folks, Stivers Lake and Mercury is pleased to announce a very special value for the new car buyer. Brand new front wheel drive 93 model Mercury tracers for $99.88. All include automatic overdrive, factory air conditioning, power steering, and brakes, plus the quality of a Mercury for $99.88. We're downtown and on the Merle Hay Auto Mile. When are you going to wake up and realize there really is a difference between window insulator kits? Our superior tape technology means our kit goes up easily and nothing stays up more dependably and removes more cleanly. When it's time to cut drafts, don't settle for anything less than the original 3M window insulator kit because it really is the tape. It's a real shame. Some companies still sell gasoline without engine cleaning additives. They only put them in their high octane grades. So you have to pay for octane you may not need just to get the additives you do need. More profit for them, but a waste of your money. At Quick Trip, every grade has all the additives you need. So you don't have to waste money to get the right gasoline for your car. Nobody sells better gasoline than Quick Trip. Give your walls fresh color with glidden paints from Menards. Fred Satin is on sale for just $9.59 a gallon. Spread enamel is just $12.99 a gallon. And bring in your color samples for computer color matching. Add style to your home with Armstrong Ceramic Tile. Our video center has do-it-yourself tips. Four by four inch wall tile is now just 12 cents per tile. Save on brands like Armstrong every day at Menards. Save big money at Menards. Thanks for making us Iowa's fastest growing news source. When you're homeless, the streets become your home. Recently, New Center 13's Kathy Soltero spent 48 hours on the streets of Des Moines as a homeless person. Tonight, she begins her special report, 48 Hours Homeless, with a look at how frustrating and frightening living on the streets can be. What you find among the street people of Des Moines are stories of courage, and despair, of hope and hopelessness. Equipped with a wireless microphone and a hidden camera, we began our 48 hours on the street. Now, I've got a little bit of makeup on. Obviously, I'm not dressed like I normally am. Gonna find out what it's like to be homeless in Des Moines for about 48 hours. Our first stop was the bus station. We immediately found out how hard it was to find shelter. We called four shelters. No answer. That's exactly what we found. Either no answer or an answering machine. Not an answering machine. <laughs> Our only option was to walk to the nearest homeless shelter. It was the beginning of a frustrating night on the street. We tried the Bethel mission. They might do something for you again. We tried the First Baptist Church mission. But they didn't answer the door and the Door of Faith mission was full. It's the hardest part 
with a woman and a man traveling together is finding a place for both of them to stay together. I suddenly realized we had no place to go, no shelter. It was frightening. We would have to sleep on the streets. Then we met Brett. Hi, Marcy. I'm Brett. Brett, nice to meet you. It was amazing. Brett had been on the streets for at least 10 years. He has almost nothing to call his own, yet he was worried about me. Is it very safe, though, just to hang out on the streets, or are we okay here? Or? Well, not really right here in this area. He bad. offered me a shelter in a nearby abandoned building. So I sleep on a lot. I sleep on this roof over here. There's blankets up there. We climbed up four flights of stairs to the roof of an abandoned building. Brett sometimes sleeps here among the empty bottles and trash. Well, this is just one of the places that Brett told us to come to. He says that a lot of the guys come here, if they can't go into the missions, if they've been out drinking, then they can't go to the missions. So they'll sleep outside, and this is a pretty secluded area. It's got a beautiful view of downtown Des Moines. Any place can become your home when you're desperate. As we climbed down from the roof where Brett sleeps, we met Raul. He was sleeping behind a dumpster. How come you're sleeping back here tonight? Because I like it out. I like it out. If you want to sit in judgment and say it could never happen to you, remember, they never thought it could happen to them. Raul has a 14-year-old daughter he hasn't seen in years, and he still has hope. You know what? I haven't seen that baby in uh, nine years. But she's still your baby. Of course she's my baby. <laughs> because that's my little girl, man. Mm -hmm. I love her, and, and she knows that. He sleeps behind a dumpster, but he's still thankful for what little he has. What do you do during the day? I hunt. What do you hunt for? Camps, bottles, and stuff like that. And uh, for friendly people, just like, just like yourself. You know, it gets lonely out here. Tomorrow night, as my 48 hours on the street continues, would you help a homeless person? You won't believe who helped me and who turned away. Kathy Saltero, News Center 13. That's going to be an interesting segment as well. Kathy has shared her stories with mm -hmm. us, and, and you'll, you'll want to hear about her panhandling people that she actually knew. You know what I think is so enlightening about it is that you find out that these people on the streets are, are just like us. They just fell into hard times and maybe couldn't yeah. get out. We seem to say they're nameless by calling them homeless, but of That's course right. they're not forecast is coming up next. Gary says the cool winter-like weather is going to stick around through the weekend. Stay with us. John and Kim return with more news after this look at today's financial report. How do I make new improved KFC extra tasty crispy so crispy outside and so juicy inside? The secret is a special KFC sausage. Any questions? New improved extra tasty crispy from KFC. Hurry in and try new Extra Tasty Crispy Chicken at KFC. Starting Thursday, you can get 10 pieces of Extra Tasty Crispy Chicken for just $5.99 plus tax. That's right, 10 pieces, just $5.99. Available in Lake Edna or your neck of the woods. Out here, I don't mind some help. Like this Ivamec pour-on. Convenient. Now I can get externals like lice and internals too, and that's two jobs at once. Ivamec pour-on for cattle controls internal and external parasites. What's it like to be homeless? Recently, News Center 13's Kathy Soltero spent two days and nights on the streets of Des Moines as a homeless person. What's it like to be homeless? Find out as Kathy Soltero lives on the streets, 48 hours homeless, tonight at 10. Get a free semi-weightless mattress from Big Sur Waterbeds. How? Just buy any of these waterbeds now for only $2.25.99. Choose from oak, three different day beds, an assortment of bookcase beds, and a race car waterbed, each just $225.99. And Big Sur will upgrade you into a free semi-waveless waterbed mattress. That's a $50 value. For a limited time, get the free semi-waveless upgrade.